Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah 9, we go into history. History is very important. Something you need to know is you need to know where you're going. You need to know where you've been. You need to know by what mistakes were made so you don't make them again. History is when you touch the hot stove later on in life, you, you look at the stove, oh, I've already done that. Don't need to do it again. Now on the 20 and 4th day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with feasting, with sackcloth, and with earth upon, their, upon them. Shows a sign of repenting. Now this month, I probably made a September from the well, not the seventh month, which is our September, October of chapter 8. They've gone from, if you made the outline, same month. Now we're given a date. They're in sackcloth. They're, fast, uh, they're fasting. They're serious. Now I want this is confined to the time when they were weeping. I have to check the two dates on that one. See, what, see if this is later or after chapter 8. And the seed of Israel separate, separated themselves from all strangers. The Arabians, the Babylon. There's a separation needed among God's people. You can't be an assembly of wicked. You can't be an assembly of people who don't want anything to do with God. You can't be an assembly of Satan. Uh, Paul writes something that, you know, you can't have the tables of devils and you can't have the table of God. So there has to be a separation. And stood and confessed their sins. All right, we're not just putting a show on here. We're, we're confessing our sins of the nation. We're confessing our own personal sins. And the iniquities of our fathers. Now, in the church age today, we don't go back and confess the sins of our fathers, or our great-grandfathers. We don't do that. The Old Testament, the law, and the people were, were um, I'm trying to think of thing, was a corporation, a nation. The church age, the Pauline epistles, and, and those are individual. Listen, if America wanted to get right, yeah, the Christian needs to repent, the Christian needs to get right with God, and then for a nation... Well, let's forget the nation. The church itself needs to get together and say, Lord, you know, we've sinned, we've done wrong. Uh, everything has been done and clean it up. But you don't go and say, you know, confess your sins today of others. There's a church out there, the, Mor the Mormons, that they'll, you, they'll do genealogies, and you can pray for the genealogies of those people they find in your family for sins. There's Roman Catholic Church. You can pray for the soul. No, that's no. That's not today. We don't do that. You don't pray for George Washington. You don't pray for Robert E. Lee. You don't pray for them. You pray for yourself and your family and your church. And this time of separation is when they separated from the, the wives that they had married wrong. And they, and they stood up in their place. They stood up. When did the church ever sit down? When did we ever get pews? And read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God one fourth. And read in the book of the Lord, law of the Lord, their God, one fourth part of the day. So twelve hours a Jewish time from six a.m. to six p.m. Three hours they read the book of the Lord. The law. Three hours. You can't get people to read the Bible for 15 minutes. To finish the Bible through a year. 15, 20 minutes at an average speed, you can finish the Bible. Three, three or four chapters a day, you can finish the Bible in one year. And... Struggling. Here are people three hours. You get three hours in one week for a church. 
Maybe four if you go to Sunday school. But if your church is closed Sunday night, and if it's closed Wednesday night, you don't even get three hours. Another four part, they confessed. For three hours, they're confessing their sins. A three hour altar call. And worship the Lord their God. Then stood up the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua, Benai, Kenmio, Shebadiah, Benai, Shebiah, Benai, and Sheniah, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Again, there are things out there that are perverted, especially by the charismatic. You're talking this loud. You got preachers out there that raise their voice and say nothing. Now, I can raise my voice in anger. I can raise my voice to express something. But if I just raise my voice and say nothing that you don't even understand, that's not holy. That's not godly. That's devilish. Raise your voice and stand out, Israel. We need to get right and get right with God. Hear the word. It's raising your voice. Amen is raising your voice. And then the Levites. I already read them. No, I didn't. Then the Levites, Yeshua, Kenemiah, I'm going read these guys. Benai, Heshebina, Sherebiah, Hajiah, Shemabaniah, and Pethaniah said, Stand up. But they had to be sitting down. And bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Making God happy is what bless means. And blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praise. God is the ultimate one. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. There's no other gods. Thou hast made heaven, creator, and heaven of heavens. There are three heavens, Paul says. With all thy host, the earth, no big bang, and all things that they're in. The seas and all that's therein, land animals and sea animals, and land life and uh, sea life. Thou preservest them all. I wonder if that goes back to the flood, where God could have wiped them all totally out. And the host of heaven, the angels in heaven, worshipeth thee. There are angels right now worshiping God. Thou art the Lord, the God, who didst choose Abram. Okay, here comes the history. And brought him forth out of Ur of Chaldees. He called him out. And gave his hand the name Abraham. Where do you find Isaac? You don't. All that Egypt, all that, she's, not, she's my sister. Tell them, please, we're, we're brothers and sisters. All that's been wiped out by God in the history. And found him, found his, his heart faithful before thee, and made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, to give it. So that land over there is given to and it's recorded in the Bible, not to Ishmael, not to the Roman Catholics, not to nobody but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes. I say to this seed, Jewish, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous. They're in the land again. God had to take them out of the land because of their sins. And we're back in again. And this see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, Exodus, and heard their cry by the Red Sea. They cried out because the, the army was there. And show his signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on, on all his servants and on all the people of, the land, of his land. So th listen, this place weren't just one little spot. They weren't in Pharaoh's palace. The entire nation of Egypt suffered. And thou keepest, no, wait, thou, all the people in the land, for thou knowest that they dwelt proudly against them, the Jews. 
The nation of Egypt was in pride. God had to break them down. You never find pride with God. So this thou get thee a name as it is this day. Listen, when they came to Jericho, Jericho was a, was a, a frightened. Here comes those people. Um, the Moabite king there, they hired Balaam. He was afraid when he saw Israel coming. And thou didst divide the sea before them. So it was witnessed. So they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. There wasn't no water puddles. And their persecutors, thou knewest, thou threwest into the deeps as a strong as a stone into mighty waters. The Egyptians followed them, and God closed the water behind them and drowned them all. Moreover, thou ledest them in the day by a pil by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, guidance, and gave them light in the way wherein they should go. Listen, there should have been no excuse for the wilderness journey failures. There are people you're going to deal with on the street. Show me God. Let God do something and then I... You know that's not true because look at what God did. He showed a, a, a cloudy pillar, a fire pillar. They saw that and they still did their wickedness. God gave the nation of Israel all signs and wonders... And what do they end up doing? Where are they today? And you need to explain to somebody when you're dealing with somebody who's like that. Because you got to show them in the scriptures and show, you know what? It didn't help them. Just because they, you want to see something. And that's where Christians are today with television. They want to see. They want to see Christian movies. They want. It's not going to do you nothing. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And thou gavest from heaven from their, for their hunger, and broughtest forth water for them out of the rock of their thirst, and pro promised them that they should go and possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. Not only did God provide a way, a direction, but he gave them food and water in a still. Look at their journeys. I think the first one, there was no water. God met their need. Then there was no food. Then there was no water. Then there was no food. And it is often, why didn't they learn their lesson? Why don't we learn our lesson? We today forget about God's blessings and we sing, count your many blessings, and we don't. How many times have you ever been alone and said, Lord, you know what? I forgot to thank you about healing that, whatever that was, or answering that prayer. Lord, I prayed this prayer to you. I never thanked you. Verse 13, thou camest down upon Mount Sinai, and spent, this is Exodus 20, and spake unto them from heaven. They heard God's voice. There will be people out there, you need, to, you need to know Exodus 20, you need to know uh, Nehemiah 9, 13. Say, listen, God spoke to them, and they still did wrong. The, the original Ten Commandments was oral. Second and third time were tablets. And gave them right judgments and true laws and good statutes and commandments. And man is known unto them the holy Sabbath. And commands them, commands them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. And thou gavest them bread from heaven for their hunger. And brought forth water for them out of the rock of their thirst. And promised them that they should go and possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. God has been faithful all the way. But they and our fathers dwelt proudly. Pride. That's the problem. America is not going to listen. The churches in America are not going to listen because they're prideful. And harden their necks. 
When a guy in the courthouse wanted to bring the Ten Commandments in, they hardened their necks and fought it. When a child tries to bring a Bible into a school, they hardened their necks. When you get somebody who tries to stand for Jesus, they harden their necks. But speak against Islam, speak about somebody else, and oh, we got to do something. And hearken not unto thy commandments. They just did not obey God. And refused to obey. Neither were mindful of the wonders that thou didst amongst them. You can, God can show you everything you want. If you got pride, if your neck is hard, you're going to rebel. That ain't going to do you nothing. Of all the people who were there on Calvary night, between 3 and 6 p.m., of all the people there, how many got saved? One. How many people saw the, the sky get dark? How many people see the graves open up? I mean, the, the, the earth open up. How many people saw the Old Testament saints walking around? But how, how, many, how many does the Bible record got saved from that? Not too many, because where do you find the 11 disciples after that? They're up in the upper room, hidden. From who? From the Jews and from the Romans. Had the nation of Israel gotten right with David or whoever walking around, that those, those disciples would not have been hidden in the room when Jesus came in. So you can't say, God, show me something. No, we have, Peter says we have a more sure uh, prophecy or something like that. It's the word of God. We have something better with Samuel, Nehemiah, David, all them have. We have it in a written form. Be mindful of the wonders that, that, that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks. And in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. They wanted to go back to Israel and assigned a captain to do it. But thou art God ready to pardon. Amen. Gracious and merciful. Amen. Slow to anger. How many kings have we read about in how many years? Through 1 Chronicles, through 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Samuel. How many years was it when God finally said, that's it. You're gone. You're out of the land. And God only did that for the land to have its rest of the Sabbath, the Bible says. The Bible says that God took them out of the land, so that land it has to have its Sabbaths. And great kindness, and forsook them not. You read about the, the religions out there, and you go against them. Find out what they do to you. You're de church. You're, de you're deflocked. You're no more part of them. In some cases, you can't even go back. Some cases, they'll, they'll give you death. Some of them cases, they'll excommunicate you to hell. Now, God, yea, when they had made them a molten calf. So you can't say back here when they made this captain that was Aaron. Where is this Moses? They can't say it. Because now here's the calf and Aaron. Before that calf, before Exodus 20, they, had to, they wanted to go back. This is thy God which brought thee out of Egypt. And had wrought great provocations. And the Egyptians worshipped the calf. Among other gods. Calf is where you get milk, meat to survive. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsook them not in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud departed not from them by day, and to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night, to show them light, that they may wherein they should go. Listen, God did not depart from them. God was with them all the way, even though they rebelled, even though they'd done wrong. 
Listen, today as a born-again Christian, you're saved, you're always saved. But there will be a time in your life that God may just stop and let you walk on. You're still saved. But God's faithful. Thou gavest also thy good spirit, the Holy Spirit, to instruct them. Withhelds not thy manna from their mouth. And gave them water for their thirst. He fed them all along the way. The Bible says their feet did not swell. Their clothes did not get old. They didn't need a Walmart. And still they rebelled against God. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Now, how, that is a miracle. Mama and Daddy forgot that they didn't have to buy shoes no more for the kids. Listen, they walked. They didn't drive a car. They didn't have Nikes and the shoes that we have today. They had sandals. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners. So they possessed the land of Sion, and the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, the king of Bashan. Notice how that guy keeps showing up. That's the guy that had the iron bed as one of the giants and. He keeps showing up for some reason. Something about that name. He shows up more than Joseph shows up, the husband of Mary. Their children also multiply as thou as the stars of heaven. Can you count them? Now, this day and age, we have smog and pollution. We have carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. We have smoke and all that. When you look at the sky today, it is not how you looked at the sky back then. I'm going to give a number, but I could be wrong, off. When these people here in Nehemiah's time look up at the sky, they probably could see 35% more, if not more, of the stars in heaven than what we can see today. Our atmosphere is cloudy. It's it's getting soiled. There is around the earth right now, thanks to man and, and NASA and all those other things, there are floating junk that they have to map every time they're going to put something in our space, that they don't hit those things. So when Nehemiah says, you know, as far as the stars of the, of the heaven, as far as the, the history of the Jews, as far as the stars of the heaven, when they look out there, it's like, that's a lot of them. And the stars have changed. They've expanded or whatever you want to call it. Because back then they could look up those stars and say, hey, that looks like a hunter. You look up there in the star today, like, I just see three, star five, six stars. That's all I see. How can that be a hunter? And they were as much as the stars. And more today. How many Jews are there? And brought us, my eyes getting cloudy, and brought us them into a land, which he did, concerning that thou hast promised to our to their fathers they should go in and possess it. God was faithful. He said, Well, God had to kill out a whole bunch of them during 40 years. Well, he got them in the land. There are just some people who are just too rebellious that God says, listen, you know what? You're not going to enjoy it. That's where you got to separate the church from Old Testament teachings. Don't think, you know, if you live wrong and that, God's going to separate you and you're not going to Jerusalem. No. You're saved. You're always saved. See, you can't run. You can't say this is Nehemiah. This is the church now. There were people in the Old Testament, Jews who were God who are of God, who are of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve tribes that died and went to hell. And didn't even go in the promised land. There are Jews that went in the promised land and still died and went to hell. 
today, excuse me, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are saved, sealed, signed, delivered, and you can't lose it. So the children went in and possessed the land. This is the book of Joshua now. And thou subduest before them the inhabitants of the land of Canaanites, and gavest them into the hands with their kings and the people of the land, and they might do with them as they would. You do whatever you want. It's your land, your house. You don't like the garden they have there? You can tear it up and put a new garden. They took strong cities and fat land. Fat land means it was full of food. Make you fat. And possess houses full of goods. They walk in the house and the kitchen was completely filled. That furniture was complete, all there. All mama had to do was tell hubby and the kids to just move it over there, move it over there. It was all there. They didn't have to move in the house and go down to the furniture store. It was all there. They didn't have to go to the grocery store. It was all there. All mama had to do was go in the kitchen and find where the pots and pans were at. That's all she had to do. All dad had to do was go out in the shed, open up the door, and see, see what kind of tools he has now. All little girl had to do is go in her new room, open up, and see what toys and dresses she has. It was there. There was no Walmart. You didn't need it. God provided. God was Walmart. And you got to keep the hangers. Never let you keep the hangers at the stores. And look at this. Possess house full of goods. Wells digged. You didn't have to go dig a well. It was already there. Vineyards. Vineyards were planted. Olive yards are already planted. And fruit trees in abundance. The apple trees and pear, whatever kind of trees they have over there was already ready. So they did eat and were filled and became fat. I don't mean I don't think that means as in tight in the belt or loose in the belt. I think that means fat is they they had a lot of possessions and they started trusting those possessions over God. This is America. America has too much. Listen, children today are too fat, and they say the science. I mean, science says it's true. I'm not making it up. We got more junks in our house. And we don't. We got so much junk we can't even bring the car into the garage anymore. And we got to go buy a storage center down the street to put more junk into it. And yet we don't bless God as a nation. We don't thank God as a nation. We thank China because it says made in China. How about made in China and brought to you by God? And we're not done. They delighted themselves in thy great goodness. It's God's great goodness. But they took it, the, the, the possessions more than God. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee. And cast thy law behind their backs, and slew thy prophets, which testify against them to turn them to thee. Prophet God would send in there and say, Listen, you're doing wrong, they kill them. I wonder what kind of prophet God has me to be. In this wicked and perverse nation. Not a lot of people are listening to what I have to say. And what I'm saying is from the Bible. And testify against them to turn them to thee. They told them to repent. Turn or get wiped out. Turn or go into captivity. You don't believe me? Where do they end up? In captivity. They didn't turn. You know, when you tell someone today, turn or burn, if they don't turn, if they don't get right, what will happen to them? They will burn.
Therefore thou deliverest them into the land into the hand of their enemies, Babylon, who vexed them in the time of their trouble. Actually, this is the book of Judges, so this wouldn't have been Babylon. This would be all the nations that you read about in uh, Judges. And, you know, God sent them this, this nation against them, and God raised up this judge. And after so many days, they did wicked again, and God had to send these people against them and rose up another judge. This is the book of Judges we're reading through now. This is not Babylon. I was wrong. When they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, judges. What do you call a judge? You call him a savior. Scripture with scripture. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You know why Jesus Christ is a savior? He saves us out of the hand of our enemy, Satan. Listen, we got enemies on this planet right now, earth. I've got enemies. And listen, God may not deliver me from them. He may make them a thorn in my side for the rest of my life till I drop dead and go to heaven or rapture. But I got a savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has given me victory over Satan. Where in the book of Judges, God sent them a Savior, it says. Read the book of Judges. But after they had rest, <laughs> peacetime, they did evil again before thee. Therefore let, liftest thou them in the hand of their enemies again, so that they had the dominion over them, the enemies. Wasn't it Gideon that, that was secretly doing, getting some barley? In fear of, I believe, with the Philistines. It wasn't in one place in Judges said that the, the, the Philistines wouldn't let, them show, wouldn't let them have any weapons. All they had was a file for their ox gourds and, and the main ox. They were in the land, but they weren't the, the leaders of the land, the rulers. The enemies were because they defeated God. Yet when thou when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And many times, book of Judges, how many times? Well, 13, 14 Judges is there? Didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies? Didn't deliver them because of them. Didn't deliver them because of Gideon. Delivered them because God delivered them. And testifies against them. That thou mightest bring them again into thy law. Yet they dwelt proudly. There's that word again, proudly. And hearken not unto thy commandments. But sin against thy judgments. Which if a man do, he shall live in them. And withdrew the shoulder. And that's like, leave me alone. And the mama grabs her child in the grocery store. Because it's time to, and he throws his shoulder away from him. Sort of like when you got candy in your hand and you don't want people to know about it. You throw your shoulder away. You know, that's a sin. Right there in the Bible. And withdrew thy shoulder and hardened their neck and would not hear. And there are Christians like that today. What happened? Remember, this is history. This is not Nehemiah's time. And what happened to him? God turned them over to the enemy. Who, and who's the enemy today? Who, who are the ones that God would turn the church over and Christians over to? The world and Satan. And since Satan's a liar, what would Satan have them to believe? They're doing right. Read Revelation 3. Yet many years didst thou for, forbear them. God is long-suffering, the Bible says. Long-suffering is more than patience. And testify against them by thy spirit, the Holy Spirit, and thy prophets. When God sent those prophets to them, Jeremiah, Isaiah, the Holy Spirit was in them. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit was in him. John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit was in him. Yet would they not give ear. They wouldn't listen. Therefore it gavest thou into the hand of the people and the lands. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them. For thou art a gracious and merciful God. 
Now we get into Kings and Chronicles. Now therefore our God, the great and mighty, the terrible God, that terrible again doesn't mean, Arr! that means he excites terror. The things that God does is like no one else can do. How many times have you heard in, in your lifetime CNN reporting that we stand by this big scene and so the sea just opened up and people were walking across? No. That was a terrible act. He said, yeah, because God killed the, killed the Egyptians. No, that wasn't terrible. Here he is. The terrible act is he opened up this river and what I think Pastor said, a million people walked right through lengthwise or width size. That was like a wee wee. What kind of terror is that? When they came to Jericho, they were like, oh boy, it's those Jews, and you won't put. What did Rahab say? We heard that all what God did, how he destroyed uh, Egypt. We are afraid of you. You notice how they locked up Jericho, but they didn't fight Israel. They didn't dare. They were hoping Israel would just go right around them. Jericho didn't want to fight, and they didn't want them. They were scared. That's the terror of God. You know why there are people sick in the churches today and things go on? Because so another Christian looks at it and says, Oh, I better not mess with God. When a church gets involved with sin and stuff like that, and another church is look at that church and say, Hey, I don't want to do that in our church. Better watch out that God's holy. Now therefore our God, verse 32, the great and mighty and terrible God who keep his co covenant. I just read today in Genesis, my, my Bible read, he says, I'm going to make a covenant with the animals and man. Every time I send rain and the rain stops, I'm going to put a bow in the sky. And we see a bow every time. I think a couple weeks ago when we were coming home from downtown with all the rain, we saw a double bow. You know that double, you know what that rain, rainbow means? That means God says, I remember what I talked to Noah and the animals that day. When I bring rain upon the land, it ain't the color of the sunlight coming through the rain and, and making it. Listen, the rain's already done with, isn't it? So how can it be the sunlight coming through the rain? It's God saying, listen, I'm done with the rain. I'll put that bow because I'll remember. When you see a rainbow, think about this. God's looking at Noah and the animals. And what does that rainbow bring, bring to mind? I'm not going to flood that earth out as much as you guys keep aggravating me down there. I like to, but I'm long-suffering. See, scientists don't have it right. God does. He makes covenants. And mercy, and let not all the trouble seem little before thee, that thou comest upon us, on our kings, on our princes, on our priests. And on our prophets and on our fathers, there's the order of a righteous nation, by the way. And on all the people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Kings of Assyria, that's, what, that's the ones who took Israel into captivity. Albeit, thou art just in all that is brought upon us. We deserve what we get. So when something happens to your life and you've done something to get that, you need to say to God, not why. God, I deserve that and you know what? I probably deserve more. But America's not saying that. You get a woman pregnant and all that today, you don't say, well, it's because I was fooling around with a woman and this and that. No, you say, let's go get an abortion. Let's turn it to the hands of man and not God. Thou has done right. Try to get an unsaved man to believe to understand that one. After tornadoes and tsunamis and earthquakes and, that, and what have you. You say, why is there tornadoes, tsunamis and all that? The wages of sin is death. That's why. 
It wasn't like that before Genesis 3. Man caused it by his free will to listen to Satan. How be it thou art just, you know, all right, verse 34. Neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept the law or thy law, nor hearken unto thy commandments and thy testimonies wherewith thou didst testify against them. He, he's, not, he's not sugarcoating the message here. He's saying, listen, we have all sinned. We don't even deserve to be here where we are. For they have not served thee in their kingdom. Remember all the kings we read about? Remember all the kings that go up to the temple and take the gold down to pay for another king? And they shut up the house of the Lord and they bring this idol in. They bring that idol in. They worship this God. They worship that God. They killed their children. Remember all those times? We did that study because here we are. Here is Nehemiah. All that study we did, and now Nehemiah says, listen, that, that was all wrong. For they have not served their not served thee in their kingdom, and thy great goodness that thou gavest them, in a large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turned they from their wicked works, they never repented. Only very few kings did. But the people didn't. What happened right after that good king died? It didn't pop up. Like, boom, you know, like a jacket about to do, 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 do. Boing, here I am. No. The people were still doing the sins, just under, not under the king's authority. Hiding from the king. Remember Saul? When he goes to see that witch of Endor? She, I, you know, King Saul says it's illegal for me. I'm going to get in trouble. Well, I'll relieve you from the king. Okay, let's do it. I thought it was illegal. You see, the sins were still going on. We may have better read about a righteous king, but there were still people who were doing wrong. Behold, we are that we are we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof, and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. And it yield much increase unto the kings who now has set over us before our, because of our sins. Excuse me. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle and pasture. And we are in great distress. Listen, Babylon's still in control. They don't have a Jewish king. And they don't get a Jewish king. They're in the land, but they're not. In, they're not. It's not their land. You sing a song, this land is my land, this is your... No, it's not. It's, it's the government's land. Don't pay your taxes after so, so much a period and see, see how much you own that land. I don't care if you paid the mortgage, had a mortgage burning party. Don't pay your taxes and guess what? It won't be your land much longer. And that's just a proven fact. It's not your land when you look at the history of the, of the interstates. All these interstates, 95 and all that, are around. How many people who owned the land outright lost it called to eminent domain? If it was their land, there would be no eminent domain and they'd be still living in their land. Instead of having a highway run through it. It's amazing when we were going through, coming home or going to uh, Connecticut, we see there was a cornfield on one side of the highway and a cornfield on the other side of the highway. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, gee, was this all cornfield at one time? They are in the hands of Babylon. There is no Jewish king. There has not been a Jewish king. And there will not be a Jewish king until Jesus Christ and David the prince shows up. And because of all this, 
we make a sure covenant. Oh, look at that. God's been making covenants. Now they're making one. Why was Jesus Christ so hard on them when he came? Because they made a covenant. And you bet your belly button, God held them to that covenant. And write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests sealed unto it. And then when Jesus Christ came, they rejected him and crucified him. In 70 A.D., after many prophets, Peter, James, John, Paul, Silas, 70 A.D., God destroyed them, the land again and scattered them. You know where Israel is today? Physically, they're in a place called Babylon, which is the world. When you read Babylon, Mystery Babylon, and the two Babylons, do you realize the Babylon religion is everywhere in the world? So where is the Jew? He's in the world. He's in the Babylonian captivity. And one of these days, God's going to call up and say, go back. Israel and Nehemiah are going to be future. We just read history. It's going to happen again. We'll close there. <laughs>